This is the Ask Foleschini podcast, where the modern economy is discussed from a skeptic's perspective. Mr. Foleschini helps you distinguish what is sustainable in our economy and what isn't. Not everything that glitters is gold, and not all mud is dirty. The podcaster Mr. Foleschini provides no-nonsense advice. He had it all, lost it all, went bankrupt multiple times, and is now attempting to come back from zero with sustainable growth. There are numerous coaches and preachers on the internet that preach about positive thinking and how life is all roses if you just care to see it that way. Well, Mr. Foleschini is definitely not one of them. We recommend you ask Foleschini to keep it real. He discusses the darker side of the current economic reality, the side that's more important for your personal and business finance. His first intention is to help you keep what you already have. Not to be a complete party pooper, Mr. Foleschini will also hint at the earning opportunities in the economy today. In order to please the almighty algorithm, please like, share, and subscribe. And now it's time to start taking notes. The mic goes to the podcaster, the one and only Mr. Foleschini. Welcome to the Ask Foleschini podcast with a guest. I'm proud to present Monique Blockzin from Hanover, Germany. Monique is the founder of Heart Powered Business, which has helped hundreds of speakers and entrepreneurs from 50 plus countries with her voice to millions framework to grow their business to six, seven figures by turning their message into scalable businesses. Monique herself is also an award winning international speaker, business mentor, podcaster, and published author. Before becoming an entrepreneur, Monique worked for 15 years in different corporate leadership positions. Combining her passion for business with her love for speaking, she helps you turn your message into your golden key to success. Her business mantra is speak up, scale up, impact the world. Monique, please tell us more about yourself. What is your story? Peter, amazing. Lovely to be here. And I love your your interview series. It's so inspiring. Uh, And I feel honored to be here with you. And hey, welcome everyone. I know that you are six, seven figure business owners and uh, you're you're really making an impact in the world. So what is my story? Where do I start? Well, maybe I should start with saying, well, I'm actually a girl growing up in Eastern Germany, right? And, uh, you know, at the time, Eastern Germany was still a communist socialist country, right? And there were hardly any entrepreneurs. People were actually state employed, resources state owned. And still, even while I grew up, Okay, at the age of 10, 14, 18, I realized what people need and want, and I gave it to them and made money with it, even as a kid, even though no one would teach me in the socialist system, right? And I intuitively always have been an entrepreneur. However, you know, I, I followed the, the mantra that a lot of us grew up is with, which is girl, be good at school, get a good job, live a good life, right? So I studied and at some point, you know, followed a very successful career. And then I got a kick in the, in my butt by destiny. Um, you know, one day I was sitting at my desk and I was getting an email from a friend of mine. And she said, well, Monique, I don't know if you're rare, but uh, but Michael just died. And Michael was a soul friend of mine. He was 46 years old, leaving a five-year-old child behind, dying like this, okay? And uh, interesting enough is shortly after, the year after or so, my boss died age 46, leaving a five-year-old child behind. Well, call that coincidence. It wasn't for me. It's like, you know, all these coaches are always asking you the question, right? If you have to die, you know, what do you want to die out of? So we never take these questions seriously until we do. So it was a time of my life where I was in a very striving, very good corporate career, right? Juggling million dollar budgets, you know, know, earning six figures, driving a shiny company car, all of it. And I realized that was not my passion and purpose. And I started to dig into my life. And I realized that even as a child already, I had that kind of entrepreneurial gene inside of me. So I stepped out and, uh, you know, I could say, hey, and the rest is history. No, it wasn't, right? I stepped out and I thought, like, I know business. I have a global network. You know, building a small business should be easy. Guess what? It wasn't. (laughs) You know, I built a business together with five partners, right? All smart business people, most of them haven't been entrepreneurs before, and our business, you know, at the moment, at that time, failed. You know, I lost a lot of money, okay, and I learned 10,000 ways of how not to do it. (laughs) 
until I found a mentor that helped me and started to show me the way. And I was lucky enough, uh, you know, I worked with a mentor that was really well connected with the who is who of the of the speaking training personal development industry. And uh, you know, she really took me by the hands and showed me how how to really get my business going in a solid way. And uh, no, I think, uh, yeah, and then I really realized, you know, even though a lot of us are smart, a lot of us are, have a lot of experience, a lot of us are courageous, still these ingredients are not enough to really build a growing and thriving business. It takes more than that. And often we should learn from people that, uh, you know, that know how to do it. Another element, you know, and also, you know, once I started building my business, you know, in the early days, I really doubled my income year after year after year. So every year I doubled my income. And how did that happen? I, you know, I really used the power of my voice. There's so many entrepreneurs out there that do amazing work. Their clients love them, but they still don't have as many clients as they'd like to or they're still not growing their business at the speed that they would like to. And what I learned is that if we use our power of our voice, if we use speaking and boosting our visibility, right, everything changes to a different level. So, uh, you know, we all know, like, it's it's not the best product in the market. You know, it's not the person that has the best product that makes the most money and makes the biggest impact with their business. It's the person that's most known and visible. Right. And speaking is a really powerful way to boost visibility. And I don't know, Peter, you know, if you have another question for me or I. It's, it's I, course, talk of forever. I have a pool of questions. I wrote it down. I just didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> right. Because yeah. maybe one more thing I can say already, you know, give people a little bit into of a glimpse into our conversation today as well is, you know, I'm talking about speaking. I'm talking about visibility, but also. You know, we developed actually a framework. We developed something like a visibility booster roadmap to guide people from wherever they are to really help them become outstanding speakers and thought leaders. And once they are, their business is easily, you know, double, triple, 10x and more. Okay, so really uh, interesting claims. So you, you you made a couple of claims. So I will I will go through them and ask you uh, in detail. Please do. So uh, basically, you. Um, you said that uh, you were an entrepreneur from a really young age. Yes. And then you went into corporate job. And then when you started your entrepreneur journey out of the corporate world or out of the previous um, yes. corporate uh, jobs, um, you said you have to learn uh, learn it uh, all from, from scratch and all on mistake. Uh, do you think there's any other way than uh, learning by uh, doing in entrepreneurship? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, you know, um, why did I feel again? That, you know, why did I feel that I had to learn from scratch? People say, well, you didn't need to learn from scratch. You were an adult. You had been working in the corporate world for 15 years, right? At some point, I was a global head for price and yield management of a big logistics company worldwide, right? Why did I have the feeling I learned from scratch? Because I still believe if you're employed in a job, and then we want to build a bridge to building our own business. We need to think differently, mm-hmm. feel differently, network differently, act differently. Everything in a way is different. When I stepped out of that job, I had a big global network of employed people. And I'm not judging that at all. You know, people that are employed are equally beautiful human beings as people that are running their own business, right? But still, we act in a different way when we know we have a solid monthly sales uh, monthly salary check we Mm -hmm. act in a different way when we have the whole responsibility on our own shoulders to bring in the money to pay our team to build our own team to build our own infrastructure to build our own team Mm -hmm. when you know before someone was telling us what to do and how to do it and now we need to make a decision and like peter right you're a king in your kingdom i'm a queen in my kingdom suddenly any everything becomes possible we need to make choice on our own side so that's not easy. That's overwhelming, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, also um, when we are, even even a lot of you are entrepreneurs, right? You are running six figures, multiple six, seven, eight, nine, whatever, however else your business is. Still, there's moments in our life where things run smoothly on okay, right? And we could always say, well, do we always need to keep growing? I feel that we have a responsibility that we all have a gift 
if we can share that gift with more people and bring our products and services to more people, I don't think we only have an opportunity to do that. We have a responsibility to do this, right? And uh, is there another way? Could I have done it differently? Yes. I could have found the right mentor faster. When I stepped out of the corporate world, I wasn't even familiar with how do you build yourself a support team? I didn't know. Yes, I knew there were coaches, but I didn't know there were mentors. And there's, by the way, a big difference between coaches and mentors, right? Mm -hmm. Coaches help you find what's already inside you by asking the right questions. Mentors are like a GPS in business. They, they understand where you are, they understand where you want to go, and they can show you the fastest way to get there because they've been on their journey already, right? Mm -hmm. No one taught me about a mentoring concept. No one taught me about accountability partnership. No one taught me about masterminds. No one taught me about having an advisory board. When you're in a job, you don't have these things normally, right? Yeah, but you don't need them because in, in a job, your job is to do your uh, part of exactly. the process exactly and when you're an entrepreneur you need to take care of the whole of every process in in the company not just exactly. yours and uh, this is uh, the the biggest exactly. um let's say difference right and, and that is a support environment you need to build also when you want to step up as a speaker when you want to grow your business right so also when you boost, want to boost your visibility because you can be as as extensive as you want to be on social media or you know other platforms or even as a speaker if you do not have other people eventually to that you have to cross promote you to get the word out for you to become ambassadors you know and and you know and you know amplifiers and multipliers for you you always just play a small game okay so uh, we, we covered the mentor. Uh, one, I, I'll, 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 I'll pose a million dollar question. How to find a good mentor that is um, really the, the best fit for you? Uh, right. How would you recommend our listeners to find the mentor? Where, where to look for, uh, for the mentor? Okay. So uh, where do you look for a mentor? Well, you have them right here, right now, right? So you, Peter, I know you're an amazing mentor to entrepreneurs, right? I know that from experience. Right. I'm a, I, you know, if, if you resonate with me and you feel like you really want to use speaking and boost your visibility and build a more scalable business structure, you know, I'm a mentor for that. Right. I, I help people really go professional with their speaking. Right. Um, a lot of people are out there and they speak and speak and it's great. And then when I ask them, but are you being paid to speak? No, I'm not. OK. But are you getting clients from your speaking? Not really. Well, but here's the thing. Here's what one of my friends once said. He said, you can be as much in love with whatever you do. If you're not being rewarded, you fall out of love. At least yeah, in business, sure. giving and receiving needs to be in balance. Mm -hmm. So we love to see people not only sharing their message, but also receiving back, either by being paid as a keynote speaker or at least by attracting clients and getting indirectly paid, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, yes, I get paid a few thousand euros when I speak, you know, and I, I'm paid directly as a keynote speaker. And often as well, I'm speaking for free, but then I attract clients and I make 10 mm -hmm. times what I'm normally paid as a keynote speaker, right? So, um, and, uh, you know, you asked me a question, so how do I find a mentor? So sometimes the mentors are just right in front of you. So if you want someone, if you want to step up with your speaking, go professional with your speaking, or you want to really, uh, you know, uh, grow your business and build more scalable business concepts so you can serve more people with less time. And you want to build business structures and, you know, uh, and, and systems to make that happen. Well, I'm happy to have a conversation. However, just in general, if you feel, you know, you are looking for a mentor, you're not sure yet if people, Peter or I are the right mentors or you look for someone else. I'd like to also answer your question, Peter. Um, I always work with a mentor, okay? I always have a mentor that is 10 steps ahead of me, right? And that can really get me to move forward, okay? Um, or a mentor that's at least where I want to go next. So first of all, as I said, how do you find a mentor? You need to be crystal clear on where are you and what do you want to make happen next? Mm -hmm. Then you find a mentor that is there already, that has been on their journey and got the success that you want to make your next success story. Okay. okay. And there might still be several of these mentors out there. So you want to ask yourself three questions. 
you know, once you have different people in mind, okay, um, one question is, do I resonate with that person? Mm-hmm. Is there a heart-to-heart connection, right? Our business is called Heart-Powered Business because I believe our heart holds a tremendous power and everything juicy in life and business comes from heart-to-heart connection, right? So the question is, do you have a connection with that person? Do you feel good? Do you feel trust, right? That's the first question. You you really need to, you know, be kind of, you know, feeling good with each other. Um, the second question you want to ask is, is that person someone that runs a business or has been on their journey and, you know, and, and get the results and get the success that you want next? Does that mentor have that experience? So if you want to go with your business from six to seven figures, right? Find someone that is there. Find someone that, you know, is making that money, right? Because they know what kind of inner game you need to win, right? And what structures you need to build to get there, right? Or at least find someone, even if they are not making seven figures yet, but that has helped many people or that has helped quite a few businesses already to get there, right? Because if you want to win Wimbledon as a tennis player, okay, you don't necessarily need to work with a mentor or a coach that, is a te- that has won Wimbledon, but it, you need to work with someone that has brought people that won Wimbledon so they know how to get you there too, right? So that's the second thing. Is that person someone that knows how to get you there? And the third question is, the, the way that mentor works, does that resonate with you? Right. Mm -hmm. It's not only can that mentor get you there, but is how the mentor can get you there and how you would be working together. Does that resonate with you? Right. So these are the questions. And where do you find them? Often they're already right in front of you. Mm -hmm. If not, ask people in that field. You can even reach out to Peter. You can reach out to me. Right. You know, connect on LinkedIn and say, hey, I am looking for a mentor in that field. We probably have someone for you if it's not me. Thank you. That is great insight. I would also like to um, get a bit out of you uh, a bit more about uh, the network. You mentioned that uh, when you were in a corporate job, you had a huge network. But when you start an entrepreneur, uh, let, let's say uh, becoming an entrepreneur, or uh, you, you just jumped in being an entrepreneur, yes. um, then you need a completely different network. Yes. Uh, can you describe the difference between employee network and the the network of an entrepreneur. Okay, so, um, okay, let me give you an example. Um, When I stepped out of my corporate job and I built my business, okay, um, I realized that I needed to get visible. I need, and I knew even already back then, I was already a paid speaker. So I've been a paid speaker for more than 20 years. I've been on stages in more than 25 countries all over the world. And I knew that speaking would help me gain the visibility to attract the right clients. And it happened, okay? But also I knew to be able to make that happen, I said, I need to speak at more prestigious stages, at more prestigious events with, uh, with bigger audiences. And I want to, uh, you know, uh, yeah, more prestigious, bigger audience with more prestigious leaders, right? And I did, you know, within actually two years, I spoke quite a few times uh, at stages, uh, you know, to audiences of quite a few hundred people, up to three and a half thousand people. You know, I, I got to share the stage with uh, amazing leaders at the time, uh, for example, in Malaysia with uh, the back then Malaysian prime minister, Najib Razak, or, you know, with John Kerry, the back then a foreign minister of the US, right? Or, you know, amazing outstanding entrepreneurs. I made it happen, but I, I knew I would only get there for if I got to help in two ways. One, if I had a mentor or if I had someone that would show me the way of how to do it. And B, if I would take other people along the way that are either already, that are also on their journey and ideally that are a couple of steps ahead of me or that are actually going as I'm going and growing as I'm growing, Okay. And uh, it's also the same thing. When you want to go from six to seven figures, you want to surround yourself more with people that are already making multiple six or seven figures, right? So, uh, and uh, again, whenever we grow, whenever we expand with our business in some way or speaking or visibility or anything else, we need to surround ourselves more with people that are on this journey. Why? People that are on that journey are hungry to learn and grow. There's bunches of information. 
they will collect tools, systems, methods to help them to get there faster. And when they discover them, they can share them with you and you can share them with, uh, with them, you see? So again, whenever you want to grow, you want to surround yourself with people that are on that path and with people that are ahead of you so you fast track you know, uh, your own journey and you avoid the mistakes they might have probably already made because okay. they tell you. So this is why, you know, uh, when I build my business also now, you know, I mean, I, you know, I am on my way to seven figures, you know, I'm making uh, quite a few six figures. Um, and again, you know, I, you know, I surround myself with people that are actually ahead of that. So for example, I built myself a mastermind with seven figure entrepreneurs. So I can learn and benefit from their expanded way of thinking, from their connections, right? From their ideas, uh, they give me input and ideas that you know that people that are not there yet will never be able to give me, and that's why the power of network is so important, Peter. Okay, is, is is there any hint how to build your network? Yes. Okay. Again, one great way is speaking. Another great way is visibility. <laughs> okay. okay. So. so there's Why no way you... around this though. Okay. So, okay. Let me go step by step. Okay. So how did I build my network? Mm -hmm. I went out there to, you know, I went out there with what I was already good at when I started, which was speaking, right? I was, all, as I said, I was already a paid speaker. I stepped out. I, I spoke more. I spoke at bigger stages, you know, more prestigious events and so on. That way I got to, uh, you know, I got uh, connected with amazing entrepreneurs. Okay. So I went to where the people are that I was looking for. So I went and, I went and spoke at entrepreneurial events. I went to speak at entrepreneur, uh, women, uh, you know, women in business events. I went to speak at uh, you know professional speaker events, right? And again, over time, I mean, the last ten years, and that's what people always say, Monique, it's amazing the network you've built, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, also you want to work with a mentor that can not only teach you and guide you, you want to work with a mentor that can open you doors. Right. So like, for example, recently I uh, I went to Singapore and I was speaking in Singapore and I said, well, yes, I'm going to be speaking there and I want to create my own speaking platforms. So with a friend of mine from South Africa, we ran our own event, said, good, running event is cool, but I need to have people in the room. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, I reached out to someone that I know and she connected me with someone that helped us coordinate the event. So then again, she tapped into her network and she invited people from her side. At the same time, I looked at how many people do I know in Singapore, and that was already about 120, right? So again, we connect with them, and again, we said, hey, bring along friends. So this is how you expand your network. You tap into the network you have to get connected to people, you know, they know. And, uh, you know, and also, as I said, you speak. Speaking opens you incredible doors to, to communities, to exclusive communities you didn't even know existed, right? So, for example, one day I spoke somewhere in The Hague, and uh, you know, one of the speakers I connected with her beforehand, okay? And um, uh, before I went, she said, "Oh, we are running a, a networking gathering evening. Do you don't you want to come?" I went. Guess mm -hmm. what? On that event, also the event organizer showed up, okay, and a couple of other speakers from all over the world. Expanding of network. Mm -hmm. So we need to be out there, right? And again, there's there's so many concrete things you can do. By the way, uh, Peter, also, if you if you care, I created actually uh, something that I call my speak to scale map, okay, or checklist mm -hmm. with my top 50 ways of what I do before I speak, while I'm on stage and after I step on off stage, what I do to grow my network, mm -hmm. what I do to boost my reputation, what I do to boost my visibility, what I do to I uh, turn my speaking into earning more. Could, and so could, we, could we include this uh, in, in description below? Of course not, Peter. Well, uh, of course, I mentioned it because I'm happy to share it, right? Together yeah, that, with, that would be great. So that Together with our amazing the... visibility booster roadmap. So again, there's a lot of things you can do to grow your network by boosting your visibility. The more visible you are, the more people start coming to you instead of you knocking on people's doors. Okay, great. Uh, I have uh, one question uh, that I get asked a lot from people that uh, would like to start speaking. 
Uh, how hard is uh, to, to um, so one of the events and most of people that will watch this on YouTube, I'm sure that they have already seen a TEDx talk. Yes. Um, th these are really popular uh, or this is really popular platform all over the right. world uh, for, right. for speaking. How hard is to prepare uh, yourself if you never spoke before for a speed, uh, sorry, for a speak on, uh, for uh, to, to have a speaking engagement on te TEDx? Um, okay. I, I have, how I, many how many speaking engagements prior to that you would recommend for people before they uh, they go to TEDx? Okay, I have good news for you. Okay, because I've been speaking, you know, I haven't given my own TEDx speech yet. It's still on my list, but I I'm I'm connected with a lot of uh, I'm connected with people that run TEDx platforms. I'm connected with people that have spoken at TEDx. I'm connected with people that are TEDx speech uh, mentors and coaches and so on. Right. So I, I just need to really get my butt moving and do one myself as well, okay? But- uh, Yeah, we're looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. Uh, it's definitely on my agenda. So, but anyhow, but I can hear, I have good news for you, okay? Because uh, I haven't spoken at TEDx, but I've spoken at a lot of procedure stages where normally it takes quite a bit of knowing how, <laughs> you know, how to get accepted there as a speaker. It's the same with TEDx, right? So with TEDx, I have good news for you. Because TEDx, as you know, right, their mantra is ideas worth spreading. So they're mm -hmm. not actually looking for professional speakers. They're looking for speakers that have an idea worth spreading. So, you know, I don't know if, you, if you've never spoken before, it might be a little tricky, right? You definitely, because even to, to apply to speak at TEDx, you need to actually go through quite a process. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the first steps is you need to actually submit uh, an application uh, and you need to include a little video where you give a little speech about your topic, right? And you want to well prepare that, okay? And my suggestion is that you work with a good speaker uh, that can help you prepare that, or even better, you work, you find a TEDx speech coach, uh, or even better, someone that runs a TEDx platform, right? That is in your, in your net circle of friends, that can tell you, um, you know, what does it take? What should be in the video? Uh, you know, uh, but I think honestly, if you just watch a couple of TEDx speeches, mm -hmm. you know what kinds of speeches, speaking requirements there are to prepare your own video, right? However, um, so that is related to TEDx, right? So yes, you need to actually have a little bit of speaking experience. If you have absolutely zero speaking experience, okay, um, at all, ever, I recommend you join a platform called Toastmasters, okay? Mm -hmm. So Toastmasters is one of the best public speaking trainings on the planet. And I have been a Toastmasters many years. Um, you know, when I moved to Belgium in 2005, we had four, I think we had four clubs at a time. When I left Belgium eight years later, we had 17. I was actively involved in supporting the growth uh, of the network. Mm -hmm. I've seen how many people flourish when they start speaking. So, but, okay, so if you have no experience whatsoever, join Toastmasters, okay? If you do have experience, okay, rather, you know, go above and beyond Toastmasters to speak. Find speaking opportunities. And Peter, we are actually running a program that's a professional speakers launch program that is going over eight weeks for everyone that wants to go professional with their speaking. We really teach them the basic eight steps of how to step up with their speaking. We help them get clear on why they want to speak more, what type of speaker they want to be, um, what is their unique story and message that only they have in that way, right? What is their right audience? How to craft a powerful keynote speech that sells, right? What's the right stage? How to select the right and find the right stage? How to make sure you get booked on that stage? How you position yourself as a speaker? How you boost your visibility as a speaker? and eventually how you build a bridge from free to paid speaking. Mm -hmm. The basics of that, eight week. So if that is something that resonates with you, I can also share that link with you, Peter. Yeah, that would be great that we can share it with okay. our uh, uh, listeners. Um, okay, uh, we're running out of time a bit. So uh, okay. is there anything uh, else you would like our listeners to take from this interview? Any quick tips or any trade secrets that you can share? Okay, I would like to start uh, sharing something that a friend of mine, who, who's an amazing uh, speaker as well, said to me. He said, Monique, okay, when we have a message, 
we don't only have the opportunity to share it with people on stage, we have the responsibility to do it. So if you have already, you know, I, I think all of us have been on this on this planet for quite a while already. We've been on many rodeos. We've learned one or two things. We've built a successful business. There's a lot of people that want to learn and grow based on our experience too, right? So again, I would say if you run a successful business, step up with your speaking for different reasons. A, step into you sharing responsibility for sharing what you know with more people. Touch more lives. Help more people to bring their business up to it in a different way. Also, you know, helping others is great or you help yourself. The more you are actually stepping into the world of speaking, you need to structure your thoughts into a speech. You need to package what you do into a framework, into something digestible for your audience. So again, it helps you actually to, you know, once you're more clear on what did I do and how do I do it and why am I so successful, you start actually creating a framework of a success framework that others could use as well. Then you can turn that framework into speeches that inspire others around the world. You can turn it into additional products and services that you don't only inspire others, but you guide them and help them take them by the hand and transform them step by step. So you start building more scalable offers in your business. In the end, it helps you grow your business as well. Right. So again, you know, I mean, I'd like to really, you know, and, and uh, I'm also here, uh, Peter, you and I discussed that, right. I'm also here. If you want to have a conversation, a quick chat, like what does it take for you to step out with your speaking, to become a professional speaker, to get your message out there in a greater way, we are happy to have a quick coffee chat with you. Right. Uh, and see, give you some concrete hints and tips to looking at where you are with your speaking or your business looking at where you want to go next. So we're going to share that link with you as well. And I'd like to really say, you know, whatever you do right now, wherever you are right now, okay, speak up, share your message with more people for you and your business growth and for more business owners and entrepreneurs and whoever you serve normally, right? So speak up, but also scale up. Stop just selling your time. Build a business framework that allows you to serve more people without investing more of your time. We always say our greatest service is in multiplying ourselves, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so scale up, scale up your business, build a, build a product and services that are scalable, build a system structure you need, upgrade your mindset, right? And, and really focus your time on serving it right away more people, right? So that all of us in that way make a bigger impact in the world together. So I just say, I'd like to end with our mantra, speak up, scale up, impact the world. Thank you very much for all these insights. Um, I will include all the links uh, where uh, our listeners can uh, reach you uh, yeah, below in the description. And uh, thank you again, Monique, for uh, being my guest tonight. Yeah, very welcome. And Peter, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And all of you, okay, start turning learning into doing, right? And, and let me know as well. I know, Peter, you're sharing it on LinkedIn and on other platforms. I'd like to know what are you taking away? What are you taking action on and what results do you get from it? And in any case, let's connect on LinkedIn. You know, I, I'm happy to share our, our you know, uh, speak to scale map, our visibility booster roadmap, right? And also the link to our speaker journey and uh, to our coffee chat. So I look forward to connect with you and have a chat. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Faleschini, for this outstanding podcast. And thank you for listening to the Ask Faleschini podcast until the end. Mr. Faleschini would love to hear your feedback in the comments. And don't forget, if you want to know, ask Faleschini or listen to the Ask Faleschini podcast. In order to please the almighty algorithm, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.